Hello everyone, welcome back to Light Source Engraving. My name is Patrick. I am your host for this channel, if you don't know that by now. Today, we're going to take a boring 4x4 mirror tile and turn it into something very cool such as John Wick or The Mandalorian. We'll run through the steps using light burn and do some image adjustments and then I'll show you settings I use on my fiber laser. It's a 50 watt Rekus and the 175 millimeter lens and that at least gets you in the ballpark for running an image on these mirror tiles. I'll put a link for the mirrors in the description so you can pick some up yourself and try them out. These are the mirrors that have the white backing on them and it uh, lasers off very easily with your fiber laser and leave some detail and shading that looks very good. So all that being said, let's just jump right into light burn. The first thing I did is flip this image so it is mirrored from what we see on our screen with the original image. And I'm gonna show you where I obtained the image and that was from Wallpaper Cave and I'll have the link in the description, but here's the exact image that we are trying to reproduce. So I download that wallpaper, import it into Lightburn. I try to look for at least a 1080 image, preferably a 4K image. They seem to, you know, work the best. Don't start with the low res image and expect a high res result. Garbage in equals garbage out. Just remember that. So there's also the link right there for Wallpaper Cave. So first thing I do is I have this little outline of my 4x4 mirror tile. So I take that, bring it in, center it over the image. If your image imports larger than size, just go up here and resize it as usual. And then center these up however you want. Since I uh, resized my image to 100, all I have to do is just center it. And then we have our line over top of our image, so I can just select them both and then apply a mask. And then I will have my 100 by 100. And if I want to make that permanent, I will go to flatten image mask and then we'll have the exact borders. Then you can right click on your image, go to adjust image. And then we'll have our options to adjust how much gamma and contrast and brightness we want. So what I normally look for is we're going to engrave the negative image. So I'll invert the display. Now I'll look and see this looks too dark. We need to lighten that up so we can burn off more of that mirror coating. So typically I'll adjust the gamma between six and seven, somewhere around there is where I'll start. Then I'll start playing with the other sliders with the brightness and the contrast. But the first thing I do is adjust the gamma. Then I go with the contrast to see if we can get those lighter pixels to spread out. Oops. Then I'll start adjusting the brightness, whether to make it brighter or dimmer, to where we start to get some contrast. Sometimes I would do an enhance radius of three, an amount of like 50, somewhere in there to start. That's something you just have to play around with and get used to. You can look up Jarvis dithering and then exactly how the enhanced radius works. But if I start playing with this, you'll see how those pixels change. Then the enhance amount, it basically tries to increase the distance between the pixels to line it up a little bit in a nutshell. So let me go to the one that I've already adjusted and I ended up settling at 0.775 for gamma, negative eight brightness, 25 contrast, three and 60 on the enhance radius and enhance amount. So when we invert the display, this is what we see. But we see the contrast and shading around the bridge of his nose, 
separation between the, his mustache and lip there. And just try to pick out a couple of areas to concentrate on. Make sure they're going to turn out okay on our engraving. Some areas with some high shading differences. And you can see in the hair, that's another good place that we want to look. And that's looking a little brighter than the original. And that should engrave pretty well. So that's kind of what you want to look for in my experience. For this 4x4 four four mirror tile, I have settled on an image setting that we run with Jarvis, and I run the negative. And I'm running a speed of 1000, power of 70, frequency of 75. And this is with a 50 watt Rakus, 175 millimeter lens, and I'm getting really good results. So this is a good general place to start with. Now, if you have mirror tiles that have a black backing, you're going to need totally different settings. So this is just for the 4x4 white tiles that I'm going to link in the description. These are decent starting settings. Try those and go from there. But every laser is different, so by settings might not work for you. But it should get you at least in the ballpark. Now I want to show you on the laser bed what I do to line these tiles up. First I'll put two bars down to make a square. Then from that square I will take two additional bars and I have thinner bars. And I'll use those thinner bars to prop the very edge of the tile up off of the surface. I ran one of these tiles on the surface and then I ran one elevated so I can show you the difference in what could happen and it affects the the quality of your final final product so it's best to run them elevated at least slightly to keep the glass off of your laser bed if I have those two smaller jig bars what I'll do is then small leave a very small overlap over the jig bars so that that tile is elevated and I'll typically have it pressed up against those larger bars so that it remains square but typically what I do is put this larger one here and just line that up so that it's just the slightest amount offset and that gives you a general idea then you can square it just by shoving it up against that jig bar on the left. Frame it, line it up, make sure you're ready to go, and then hit the start button. So let's do that. Line it up, hit the start button. I'll run this tile. I'm going to run it without the bars. It's going to be flat on the laser bed. And then I'll have another one that I'll run elevated like this and show you the difference in quality. What I'll typically do is line those up with just a little bit of overlap. That way, if there is a little detail um, or artifact remaining on the final product, it will be covered by a frame if I decide to frame it. But typically on the edges, you don't notice very much because the laser is not doing too much work out there that far.
and on the bed. As you can, hopefully the camera will focus in so you can see there, you can see it. See that there is actually a mark on the surface right in the area of the face. Here is the one that was raised up off of the bed. No marking. So what hap what's happening is that laser beam is bouncing and all the heat is actually burning uh, the glass. So there's a good view. Then when you put some paint behind it and see it kind of burn on there, you can see that dark area, especially right there. And we don't want that. So how is it white on the back? Well, you can paint it, which is one option. Or I'm going to show you a quick, easy method that I like to do. Which is way easier than paint. So here's what it looks like when it comes off. And again, here's the one with the white back. Okay, so we have our nice clean tile that has no surface artifacts on it. Here's the back of it. So instead of painting it white, what I like to use is a shipping label. If I have a shipping label left over, I will just cut that shipping label and then use it for the back. Then I don't have to wait for paint to dry. So I have my shipping label. We have a mirror, shipping label. All right, so that's pretty easy. And it's so much quicker than painting. I love it. I hate painting. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but I hate painting. So let's just put this on real fast. So here we have our shipping label. And the easiest thing to do is cut this thing in half with some scissors before you put it on. Hopefully I have scissors. I do have some scissors. Cut that cut. We'll lay Mr. Wick flat here on our work table. All right, so we've got him laying flat, smoothed out. Now, here's what Mr. Wick looks like. And we have a great representation of the picture that we downloaded. I'm very happy with that. Now that the, our label is on, all we have to do is just trim off the excess. So then, Here's Mr. Wick, upside down, sorry. I think that looks great. And then I'm going to post for my Patreons cut files so you can make a little frame. So Patreons, if you head over, you will have a link where you can download this template to make a little photo frame. And then you can just insert whatever you want as a design around your 4x4 tile. But that ends up looking pretty cool. You can hang it on the wall, give them out as gifts. Even get some done in time for Easter. Prime shipping, you can have mirrors in two days. I also did a rose and I painted the, the back of it red. So the red would show through. And man, it looked awesome. I will roll a picture in of that with the footage of this mirror here. But it looked great. Next, I want to show you how to do a 12 by 12 mirror. And then, Patreons, you will get a 12 by 12 frame that you can cut out of plywood. But that will be in a future episode. Might not be the next one, but it will be coming soon. 
So I hope you guys enjoy that product, uh, project. Find the Laser Makers Round Facebook group and post some pictures of your work. We'd love to see them. Love to see it. So check the description for affiliate links to the mirror tiles and some other stuff that I use here regularly in the shop. Um, check for YouTube links to my Laser Maker Round partners and a couple friends. Uh, link to the Patreons in there or a donation links in there. Whatever you want to check out, it should be in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, if you like the project, leave a comment. If you hate it, leave a comment. I'm always welcome to any questions, comments, or smart remarks because that's what I like to do anyway. But thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And that's it. I'm out of here. See you on the next one.